This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome into you on this Friday. I'm Rebecca Smith. And I'm Bill Bryant. And Kentucky Morning Start right here on WKYT. And it is a little more special when it is a Friday, right? And going into a nice weekend, too. <laughs> right. February 19th now. Now at 6 a.m., a young man is fighting for his life after an early morning shooting in Lexington. We're live on scene. It was really turning into a busy day here at WKYT. A lot going on in our newsroom. We've also learned that a man is now charged with murder after a deadly stabbing at an eastern Kentucky home. And Jordan Smith returns to college for the first time since winning The Voice. We have the 40s outside this morning. In some locations, it's already surpassing, surpassing yesterday's highs. I mean, we're talking about some really nice feeling temperatures, not just this morning, but by the afternoon, 62 degrees. Those gusty winds will be with us, and that'll help us really propel those temperatures tomorrow, too, and I'll have that coming up. All right, real busy day here at WKYT. <laughs> Definitely. New on WKYT this morning, a young man fighting for his life after an early morning shooting in a strip club. The victim showed up at St. Joseph East Hospital off Richmond Road about 2.45 this morning. He's now been transferred over to UK. WKYT's Mark Barber. Barbara is live at the strip club where police say the man was shot. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Police say that this man was shot three times in this parking lot here behind Camelot East. Now, the activity around this scene just started to pick up here in the past few minutes when the mobile crime lab showed up. You can see it just there over my shoulder here. Now, investigators with their forensics unit are now starting to photograph this scene and collect evidence. This is what police have been waiting for through the morning in order for their investigation to continue moving forward. Now, police tell us that the man who was shot here showed up at St. Joseph East Hospital before police were called around 245 about this shooting at the strip club on Richmond Road. Now, police tell me that man is in his early 20s and he has been rushed to UK Hospital where he is now in critical condition. Investigators say he was shot twice in the chest and once in the leg. Officers don't know why he was shot or who shot him because there were no witnesses. They're still trying to figure out if the shooting was caught on surveillance camera. Officers think their investigation will stretch well into the morning because they still have a lot of questions that need answers. They're hoping that their forensics unit will, now that they're here at the scene, they're starting to gather evidence. They will help them find answers to those key questions of why was this man shot and who shot him. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. And also new this morning, crews are still at the scene of a house fire in Lexington. The fire started about 4 o'clock this morning at a home on Kelsey Drive that's off Alexandria Drive. WKYT's Mike Byer is there working the story for us with some new information. Mike, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Firefighters remain on scene here on Kelsey Drive. After responding to a house fire early this morning, we now know what caused the fire. Investigators tell us four space heaters were running inside of the home. When the fire started, they say the space heaters overloaded the circuit, which, uh, which ran up to the attic, which caused the fire to spark out of the roof. Now, the fire happened around 3.30 this morning. That's when firefighters responded to the house fire here in the 1100 block of Kelsey Drive on the city's west side. Roughly a dozen crews responded to the fire. Now, firefighters tell us five men were sleeping in the house when the fire started. We're told they woke up to the smell of smoke. Fortunately, all five were able to escape the home without injury. No firefighters were injured. Now, firefighters tell us the home had no working smoke detectors. They say because of that, the five men were extremely lucky to escape with their lives. They say this should serve as an important warning for everyone out there to make sure that your home has working smoke detectors. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. And apparently the four are space heaters on the same circuit and the no smoke detectors, so some... Uh... Hard lessons learned at that location. 604 now, also new this morning, police have made an arrest in a deadly Jackson County stabbing. And this happened at a home on Bailey Road in the Anvil community. A witness says he chased off the attacker with a chainsaw. WKMT's Michelle Chamberlain's at our live desk with new information. State police tell us that Harry Henson of Manchester was arrested last night and charged with the murder of 36 year old Bradley Muncie. KSP says Henson is in the hospital receiving treatment for an injury he received in the fight with Muncie. Police say that fight resulted in the murder at a residence on Bailey Road in Jackson County. Four other people were present at the time of the murder. Douglas Allen tells us he was there. He says he was in the trailer when a man came in saying someone stole his medication. Allen says that man grabbed a knife and a fight ensued Police in the driveway, the and that's the when the stabbing, stabbing occurred. Police say allegedly Henson fatally stabbed Muncie and threatened the four other people who were present. Muncie was pronounced dead at the scene. The guy that got killed was uh, 
had him up on the outside and they had a few words and and he made a swing and that's when the guy got him with a knife, stuck the knife through his throat. Now, Allen said he chased Henson away with a chainsaw. We'll have more at, on that at 6.30. And police say Henson ran away after the stabbing, but was arrested and taken into custody sometime later. Henson is charged with murder, as well as four counts of first-degree one endangerment. At the live desk, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Well, we are tracking a death investigation involving an infant in Mercer County. The sheriff's office says deputies were called to the home on Bohan Road near Harrodsburg. They say the infant was unresponsive when they arrived on scene and later died at a hospital. At this point, they're not sure what caused that child's death. For the first time since winning The Voice, Jordan Smith returned to his college campus. Smith is studying music business at Lee University in Tennessee, but he took a break for the big show. The university threw a welcome back party for the Harlan County native. Jordan says he eventually plans to finish up his music business program at Lee. He's not sure exactly when that's going to happen with all that's going on in his life, but Jordan said it sure was nice to be back on campus. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Think you smart ride that wave? Why, it's still high. You gotta love that guy. 43 degrees there in Frankfurt. We are sitting outside in the 40s this morning. We haven't felt that in a long time during the morning hours. Yesterday we reached the 40s, but let me tell you this there are some locations out there this morning uh, sitting in the mid 40s that were actually higher than your high temperature yesterday. Big flow coming in from the south and southwest. And what that means is we're just going to continue to pump in the milder air. Once we go through the day, teachers, kids getting outside, absolutely 100%. You'll want to do that. You may even want to stay out there all day. I don't know. We'll sit in the 30s and 40s uh, with the mile per hour range, but some could get a little bit higher than that. Either way, 40, 45 miles per hour, you're not going to feel a difference, and it's not going to cause any issues. There's a look across town, though, as we go off into the afternoon and evening hours. Slowly dies out, but... Not too bad. We're still there with gusts. That's not sustained winds. It's gusts as high as 30 to 40 miles per hour. There's your hour by hour forecast. We go through the day, and this really pumps in some really nice air. 62 degrees by the afternoon. This isn't your only day in the forecast that it hits 62. Kids coming home from school and going to school, they'll have no problems whatsoever. And they may not even need a heavy coat this morning. Light coat, long sleeve shirt, that'll do by the afternoon. Neither one of them will have to have that coat. And we get off into the evening hours going out to dinner. It'll be perfect, perfect evening to head out to dinner at 58 degrees. Weekend planner, here's your look on Saturday at 63 degrees. Anything going on on Saturday, any events happening, be prime for that. I mean, we're talking 63 and also mostly dry. There is a slight chance of rain, uh, but we're talking 20, 30%. No big issues. That's a straight light shower. Then we head off towards Sunday at 57. You gotta love that. But we bring in a little rain in the forecast. So that's really our only bump in the road through your weekend. It's gonna be on Sunday. Like I said, you have a slight chance there on Saturday, but no big issues today and tomorrow, Rebecca. These are phenomenal days in store. You gotta absolutely love it. And you know what? This is a break. This yeah. is a break from where we've been through. We haven't seen 60s in over two weeks. So this is a nice little uh, change of pace from the winter weather pattern. But you know it's coming back. It's still February. So here we well, go. We will take it in the meantime. Absolutely. Each morning we bring you weather and traffic. Here's Officer Don right now with a look at what's happening out on the roads. Good morning. Good morning. Well, first look at the circle and traffic flow inbound. All of our major roadways, Nicholasville Road, Harrodsburg Road, even on the north side, Paris Pike, North Broadway. Everything looks okay. Let's get a look at traffic flow. We'll see what we're talking about here. Overall view in decent shape, even on the interstate this morning across that Clays Ferry Bridge. Uh, now, no wrecks in the way, so that's, that's great. And as far as drive times are concerned, you should be able to get there uh, this morning with no major issues to deal with. As I said, on the circle in the Hamburg area, we're doing okay. And drive times are turning out just fine. 13 minutes from Nicholasville. 11 from Versailles, 26 minutes from Frankfurt, and we're okay from Winchester at 23. Now back to you in the studio. All right, Don, thank you so much. Officer Don and Deanne are out there on 98 1 the Bull. When you get in your car, maybe you want to, as you said earlier, crack the sunroof or roll down the window a yeah, little bit or whatever. You know, let the wind blow through your hair. <laughs> get some fresh air and enjoy some great music on the way there on 98 1 the Bull. A lot more news coming up on WKYT this morning. Okay, so the Zika virus is a huge threat, and Pope Francis is actually breaking with Catholic teachers. On this, what he is suggesting to try and curb this virus in three minutes. Also, the Kentucky Wildcats were not the only show at Rupp Arena last night. Hear from Lexington firefighters who also took the court to honor one of their own. Coming up this morning. 
Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT This Morning. Welcome back at 613 on your Friday morning. Well, with just a few weeks until March, the Kentucky Wildcats are on a roll. The Cats remain at the top of the SEC after avenging their loss to Tennessee last night. WKYT's Brian Milan joins us now with some of the highlights. Brian. Good morning, everybody. You know, since losing to Tennessee in Knoxville a few weeks ago or a couple of weeks ago, Kentucky has been on fire. They've been lights out, and last night they continued their great play. Let's go to the highlights because the Cats started slowly. They were down 7 to 2, but then they got going. Jamal Murray hits a three in the corner. He was blue hot. He had 28. Derek Willis, just as hot. The other corner. The lead is six. Willis again. The lead grows to 11 with another three pointer. More from Murray. Three more from the right wing. Kentucky back by seven. It's 36 30 at the half. And the second half was truly amazing from Willis and Murray. Willis for three makes it 47 36. Murray will go right down the lane. Continent to continent. Foul and one. 28, as I mentioned. Tyler Eulis. He gets in on the fun. He has a three. Tennessee would take a time. Out, but it really did not matter because it was all Kentucky, 80 to 70, and the score really doesn't indicate how how much of a margin Kentucky enjoyed throughout the second half. That's the way the game went last night. Cats by 10. Back to you. Yeah, all right, Brian. Thank you very much. So, can the Cats keep it up on the road? That's the question now. They've won it up. We'll find out tomorrow night when Kentucky takes on Texas A&M. The Aggies ended a four-game losing streak this week. Saturday's game is at 6:30 on ESPN. So, uh, excitement continues. Good weather yes. and an opportunity uh, to enjoy the Cats. And during the halftime of last night's game, ten Lexington firefighters took the court for a very important cause. Something. It's very near and yeah, to them. they did a very special thing for a fellow firefighter. They played an exhibition game to bring awareness to Matt Logsdon's battle with cancer. He's a firefighter and is undergoing treatment in Chicago. The firefighters playing in last night's game say it was their way to show Logsdon that he is not in this battle alone. He's a fighter, you know. I've uh, made a few runs with him. I know where his heart is. I know how he feels about all this, the support and everything. He knows that as brothers and sisters, we're here for him. A GoFundMe page has been set up for Logston and it's raised more than $30,000. We have a link to that on our WKYT.com. 616 now on WKYT, and President Obama will pay his respects to Antonin Scalia today as the Supreme Court Justice's body lies in repose at the Supreme Court building. The 79 year old justice died of natural causes over the weekend during a hunting trip in Texas. Scalia's death has sparked a fierce debate in Washington and out on the campaign trail over who should replace him. His funeral is set for tomorrow. Pope Francis is suggesting that women threatened with the Zika virus could use artificial con contraception. The Pope said avoiding pregnancy is, quote, not an absolute evil in light of the global epidemic. Babies born in Brazil have been born with abnormally small heads and brains to Zika infected mothers. The World Health Organization is advising the sexual partners of pregnant women to use condoms or abstain from sex if they live in or have visited Zika affected areas. Five people had to be rushed to the hospital after a tour helicopter crashed in Hawaii. A witness caught it on video. The helicopter crashed into Pearl Harbor and then sank. Look at that. Mm. So dramatic. Authorities say a teenager on board was critically injured. Two others are in stable condition. The conditions of the other two people in the helicopter not released. That is something to see right there. Yeah, amazing that uh, you know people didn't make it out okay at least. I mean there are injuries, but uh, they're going to survive. It looks like 6:17 is the time this morning on WKYT and Twitter and Facebook are taking Apple's side in its public battle with the FBI. The tech companies say they support Apple's decision to defy a court order to break into the iPhone of San Bernardino shooter Syed Farouk. Apple CEO Tim Cook says. It would be a chilling precedent and is a challenge. This as well, they're going to go up to the Supreme Court uh, for an answer as to how this goes. More than one million Walmart workers are getting a raise. The company says it will boost its minimum wage to $10 an hour on Saturday. That's up from $9. The change applies to almost all of Walmart's 1.4 million workers. The pay raise won't be cheap. It will cost Walmart an additional $1.5 billion this year. 
The way you get your cable could be changing. The FCC has voted to move ahead with a proposal that lets cable customers buy and rent cable boxes from companies like Google, Amazon, and Roku. FCC head Tom Wheeler says it would help bring down costs and give customers more options. And an 80s flashback for you here. High C ecto coolers. They could be making a comeback. It was a green colored citrus flavored drink that was promoted in the 1986 cartoon series The Real Ghostbusters. Coca Cola renewed his Ecto Cooler patent recently, fueling speculation that the drink could be hitting the shelves to promote the new Ghostbusters movie that is coming out this summer. So there you go. Now that sort of different kind of high sea. You know, that, that was in my day, so I can <laughs> say I appreciate the nostalgia. I don't remember if I liked it or not necessarily, but I love that it's you know <laughs> making, again. <laughs> making a comeback. What is old is new again. WKYT this morning is just getting started. So are you getting enough sleep? Probably not if you're like most of us. Coming up, we break down a new report showing which states are sleeping the most. Whether you're on TV right now or behind the scenes, all of us here at WKYT said, yeah, that's probably us not getting enough sleep early this morning. Enjoying the weekend, though, I'm telling you what, it's going to be beautiful. Wind advisory, how that's going to affect us, that's coming up. Good morning. Welcome back in. WKYT This Morning on the Air. And he's coming up on 623 on your Friday. A young man is fighting for his life after being shot in Lexington. That's what's trending at this hour. Police say the man was shot behind Camelot East Strip Club about 2.30 this morning. No witnesses have come forward. We understand the man is in critical condition right now at UK Hospital. State police charge Harry Henson with murder after a deadly stabbing in Jackson County. Witnesses say Henson accused B.J. Henson of stealing his medication before stabbing him in the neck. And Lexington firefighters say four space heaters are to blame for an early morning fire on Kelsey Drive that's off Alexandria Drive. Broke out about 4 o'clock this morning. Five people were inside the home when the fire started. There was no smoke detector, but they did manage to escape. And now a quick check of the forecast, and it is looking good. Here is meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, we have a wind advisory in effect through 7 p.m. Now that will start at 7 a.m. for most of our region, 10 a.m. back toward the east. However, yeah, those winds really crank up through the day. You're looking at 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. Could you get a little bit higher than that? Yeah, it's possible. But for the most part, we stay in that range with gusts. Okay, that's not sustained winds. That's still pretty strong, though. And what's going to happen, you can already see it this morning. It's just going to funnel in that really nice air. It just keeps pumping in. And that's the way we're going to uh, really go throughout the rest of your day. Starting off in the 40s, for the most part, we finish off. In the 60s later on, here's your emoji cast, okay? This will get your day going kind of the way you would feel most of us throughout the day. Not all of us. I know some of us really like the rain, really like the snow. You're not going to get it today. Sunshine, 62 degrees. I would say the majority of the region actually likes this forecast. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. You're right about that. We'll enjoy these. Uh, I like it. Next couple of days, <laughs> then we'll keep our eye on next week. It is uh, coming up on 625. All right, here is some news. About snooze, there is a new report out this morning by the CDC, and it has uncovered which states get the most and the least sleep. Kentucky is one of the states getting the least amount of sleep, with just 60% of us getting the recommended seven hours a night. Only Hawaii is getting less sleep. Surprising there. Inadequate sleep has been linked to a range of diseases and conditions, including diabetes, heart disease, obesity, depression. People living in South Dakota are getting the most sleep. Maybe get, all that cold their, weather. Get their Z's up there. Huh? Cold weather keeps them, you know, sleeping. Well, we are looking forward to a weekend of warmer weather, but in Canada, one man is making the most out of all the snow there. Right. He spent eight days building an outdoor theater out of snow. He posted this time-lapse video of his uh, construction project on Facebook. Uh, the finished product was complete with a 20-foot tall screen, wow. tables, and seating included. Well, <laughs> that's a lot of time on your hands, <laughs> right? Oh my dad, uh, you can uh, you know have a have a show till it melts, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool go. though. It really is. All right, he's coming up on 6:26 on WKYT on your Friday morning. An early morning robbery at a Lexington gas station didn't go as planned. How the clerk turned the tables on the crook at 6:30. Also tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is 104 million dollars. Saturday night's Powerball jackpot is 212 million dollars.